justification and can highlight new trends, product launches, sales promotions, and more. After the presentation, there will be a Q&A. As a participant, your audio is not activated. Instead, you can use the question section on the control panel to the right side of the screen to post a question, and we will read it to all. Additionally, we will have uh, we have added a new poll feature to the tool par to toolbar where you are invited to share your feedback on these webinar series. The PDF slides are also attached in the handout section of the toolbar, and we are also recording this webinar. We will be sending all registrants a link to the recording as well and posting it on ASID's YouTube channel. Today, we are very pleased to have Farrow and Ball, a national industry partner, featured in this week's webinar to explore theory of color and the Farrow and Ball palette. Craftsman in paint and paper, Farrow and Ball creates unmatched paints and handcrafted wallpapers at its home in Dorset, England. Made using only the finest ingredients, it's Paints are crafted with an abundance of rich pigments according to age-old production methods. Ferro and Ball wallpapers are traditionally block and trough printed using real Ferro and Ball paint to give an exquisite tactile appearance. Presenting today is Eric Runner, Los Angeles showroom manager and color consultant with Ferro and Ball. Eric studied at Washington and Lee University and experienced solidified his passion for interior design. Upon moving to Los Angeles, he joined Farrow and Ball and quickly fell in love with the product and began to explore the possibility of sharing his passion for color through the medium of F&B's meticulously curated palette. So now I would like to turn it over to Eric uh, to begin. Okay. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Today, I would like to talk to you about the Fair and Ball Color Palette, uh, the tools that we have to share with you um, to be able to put color schemes together for your clients, a little bit about the, not only those tools, but also our in-home color consultancy service, which is used for our client, by our clients, but also um, by designers and can be a tool for the designer community. Um, the Fair and Ball Palette is a curated palette of 132 colors. Stranging, ranging from our neutrals, which is the much more extreme group these days, into the reds, the yellows, the greens, the blues, and then some of our signature blacks. One thing that we have done here at Fair on Ball is to simplify things, take in all of our many neutrals and, and form them into six distinct groups, which can be used for the homeowner, just sort of as a starting point, or even to put together a complete palette for your home. The first of those groups is our traditional neutrals. These are, to the American eye, a much more English kind of group. Although they are yellow-based, they have a lovely undertone of gray and green that um, plays really nicely with a lot of different colors. It can go into a home and look like it's been there forever. And the soft grays and greens can actually make them good pairs for other colors that have a little bit of that muddiness or that grayness and greenness to it and you want to kind of soften it down or they're also good with a really stronger color to keep it to reduce the contrast between say trim and wall the next group of colors is our yellow base neutrals these are to the american eye the more traditional set of neutrals the off whites that are all yellow based these they should never they have creamy undertones but you never really think of them as actually being yellow uh, but these are traditionally the kind of colors that are used in ceilings and trim through american homes they pair well with anything that's nice and pure they give a great being yellow without any muddy, they give a great contrast with a nice clean blue and can really brighten the blue and heighten the yellow effect when they're paired together. Our red based neutrals, this is really the warmest group of neutrals because of their uh, red undertones. These are really useful in contemporary homes because they mix really well with things like stone and leather. And they also really do a great job uh, Working with a mid-century palette, they work great with the, the dark tones and the chalky tones, the um, mid-century modern kind of feel, Swedish teak, that kind of thing, work really well with that. They, they work great 
contrast for something that is in fact cooler, um, but they work really well with colors like London Stone, Elephant's Breath, Off Black, things that have a little bit of red to them and it kind of really softens everything for it. The contemporary neutrals, this group is actually a group of neutrals that work really well moving from uh, place to place um, in, in the home. They're actually chosen from a wide variety of spots on our color palette, and they have one thing in common, which is a very, very, barely perceptible lilac undertone that makes them kind of a little more modern feeling, hence the word contemporary, but also helps them mix with both warm and cool tones. Our easy neutrals, that they're very aptly named, there's a really, really easy group to mix with all kinds of colors. This palette of soft, warm grays is actually something that a lot of people think of when they think of the Swedish or Gustavian palette, um, that sort of silvery gray that doesn't get too institutional or blue. Um, they're really great in uh, any kind of neutral setting where you have linens and raw wood. Lovely with some of our colors like French gray, Stooky blue, worsted that have also kind of a softness to them. They play off each other and keep everything really mellow. The architectural neutrals. This is the only group actually of uh, blue-based neutrals. They're clean and crisp and white. They're purposely cool. They have that bluer undertone. They're kind of a harder edge looked. Um, one thing that you can use them with also is if you really need a delicate, delicate uh, color scheme, if you have, let's say, trim in our all white, which is a nice cr crisp, undiluted white, something like a light blue gray, like black, and actually reads as a super pale blue with lovely lavender undertones when you put it together in that palette. Another consideration that we do make when we are putting together a, a color scheme for a client's home is color weight. Color weight applies to the amount of pigment in a color. So it's sort of that that's how it translates. So when we think of yellow and blue, we always think of yellow as being lighter than blue. So the example on the left, our day room yellow against our sewn blue, obviously lighter. But when you take something like a signature fair on ball color on the right, our India yellow is super separated. It actually has the same amount of pigment in it. So therefore the same color weight as the stone blue. So this is a great way to look at something like the rich palettes in an Indian in interior, something like that when you think, how do they get away with all this riot of color? They go from green to red to blue to yellow and back to orange and then these spicy colors. If you look at those colors, you'll actually realize that they're all within the same general weight. So there's not a challenge to move between the warm and the cool, et cetera, because they have that continuity of the color weight. Another uh, consideration is color tone. So tone is actually just the, the, the shift of you within a color. So you can take an entire color family here shown on the slide from the, the palest skimming stone all the way to the deep beautiful burgundy of Rinjal and that is um, going from light to dark but that whole palette could be used within the home. So you could actually do um, a transition from a light and bright to a deep and intimate kind of color palette within the same home. But when you have that continuity of being from the same color family, that all blends together. It's an easy transition for the eye to go from room to room. Now, when we talk about putting together a color palette with the Farrow Ball palette for a client in their home, one of the things we try to do is start with some framework. There really aren't a lot of rules. I like to say there really aren't any rules, but um, the three basic schemes that are used are darker walls and lighter woodwork, lighter walls and dark woodwork, or the third option, which is coming increasingly popular, rooms painted in all one color. So the example of uh, darker walls and lighter woodwork, 
that's a lot more traditional style. And visually, it's a really clean look. Sometimes it could be a little harsh transition because of the contrast between the colors. And one way to soften that is to move to just a lighter color on the ceiling so that you've kind of mitigated the amount of jump, color jump that the eye is um, having to take in. The lighter walls and dart woodwork. This is what we see here in Southern California, we see a lot in our craftsman homes and Spanish colonials. Um, what happens is you put the lightest color on the largest surface area. So you keep the weight of the color down with often a really great tool when you have a darker floor, like a dark wood floor in a craftsman or dark terracotta floors in a Spanish colonial. And then you take the lightest color and use the rest of the area. It really lifts the rest of the space up, can really visually expand the space and just lighten and brighten it in general. Now, the one color used on walls and woodwork has very, very traditional roots. To the American eye, it's kind of a colonial feel based on the American iteration of the classic English Georgian architecture. And in that case, you have so much beautiful millwork and plaster work of very detailed cornices, you know, down to wainscoting and large multi-stage baseboards. So keeping that from all one color and the basic within a limited ring range of sheen going from top to bottom, you actually see all of the architecture and take it all in without it being broken up by any sort of color blocking. What can happen in a more contemporary setting is you can remove the punctuation that occurs when you're putting like a light or dark baseboard between a wall color and a floor color. So if you're having a little bit of a uh, hard transition from the floor color to the wall color, let's say you have a lot of red in that and you, you want to use a color on the wall that mitigates that, if you're taking that color all the way down to the baseboard, you're, take, you're challenging the eye a little less and you're doing those two colors melding together and you're keeping it very, very continuous. It can really open up a space and make a simple space that just is maybe a little bit unadorned have a nice, crisp, clean, modern look. Um, here we see examples of those three situations uh, played out in our famous lotus wallpaper. The first would be the darker walls, lighter woodwork, with our Charleston gray on pointing on the lotus wallpaper, and then the pointing chosen as the baseboard. In the next option, the black blue is a background, but pavilion blue is a color on top, the lighter color, played down to the black blue on the baseboards. And then to the far right, our lovely soft Teresa's green just played off as the, not only the print color, but actually the baseboard color in the same space. Another thing to consider is the ceiling. We never leave a room without considering the ceiling. Um, the biggest mistakes made in American homes is just leaving the ceiling white on the ceiling. Even if you are choosing a white for the ceiling, a, the, the tones in the white really need to complement the tones on the in the painting, paint on the walls. In the example on the far left, what they've done is this is a really great home with really high soaring ceilings, really nice scale to it. But they've come into this space, which is a library and entertainment room. And they've gone in with a dark color, which is our hag blue. And they've taken it all the way up the walls and across the ceiling. In a smaller room, that might be a little bit encroaching on you visually. But in this space, what it does is it brings the overly generous height of the room down a little bit, it creates a center end of the scene of the room. The two examples to the left is also another great idea, wallpaper, wallpaper paper used on the ceiling. And these two examples, it's actually stripes, so we can actually sort of elongate the lines and keep a little bit of interest going, but geometric patterns and softer, more meandering florals can work really well in that environment as well. Another option that we're seeing a lot um, used by a lot of major designers is going to a full gloss finish on the ceiling. Um, if you wanted to hear me talk about how exciting a full gloss ceiling is, we'd have to increase the time of this webinar. But the basic um, premise there is you add a little bit of glamour just with the sheen. So in a great space like a dining room where you've got there's a little bit of intimate space, and it's going to be used in the evening. Got a great, lovely chandelier with crystals in it that's casting up some lovely sparkle on the ceiling. Just add that little bit of shine to the ceiling, and it can really, really make for a very, very sexy room. The biggest consideration 
when uh, choosing a color and putting a color palette together for a client is the light source and how that affects it. So the direction the light comes from, the time of day the room is used, and whatever type of electric light might be actually used, artificial light might be used in the evenings in that same room. So as far as the direction goes, if you're doing a room with a southern, southern exposure and nice big windows, my work here is done because every color really reads very true and it's very easy to work with. It's very easy to get exactly what you want because you're not going to have any uh, modifying effects from the light. West and east facing light have their own challenges, but they do tend to, tend to work well. The, the biggest challenge is uh, north facing. It tends to darken a color, add some really muddy green tones sometime. So um, in that case, um, you either want to go ahead and take a really clean color and knowing that you're going to end up with a more grayed down, slightly green casting version of that color, or you want to go ahead and embrace the dark and do a nice dark intimate room. Um, there's a huge variety of light. This is why we um, at Fair on Ball, when we're in a customer's home doing the consultation, will certainly um, be able to take that into effect. If a client themselves are doing the sampling themselves, we have our wonderful sample pots where they can actually paint up samples either on the wall or on boards and move around the house and have a look at it and just really make a good decision on the color based on the actual light that's being produced in the room. This can be handy for the interior designer. Um, we have lots of tools for sampling. Obviously, we do have, as I said, the, sam the famous serum ball sample pots. Um, we also have our color cards, which are constantly available and can easily be mailed out to anybody. Um, we have our medium color book, which is basically fancy British speak for fan deck. So it's basically a fan deck. But again, uh, all of our uh, tools like that, our color tools are actually made with paint, not with ink. So you get a true read on the color. And additionally, for designers only, we have a wonderful large binder with six by nine pages. It's a three ring binder with six by nine pages. We call our large color book. Um, and those are actually what we use in the in-home color consultancy service. We use those when we go into people's house, we post them on the wall. So we're looking at a good large sample of the color in the client's home and we're able to move it from wall to wall and show them some contrast with trim, ceiling, et cetera. So those are all tools that you can use, we can use. We can work with you in a showroom, over the phone, or again, ultimately it can be in the customer's home with a color consultant. Another area that um, gets a little attention and is really, really important is the painting of exteriors. When you're painting an exterior, you're actually going to take the color that you read, you're going to take the value of it and knock it down about two notches when it's outside in full light. So uh, a color that reads in the well into the deeper tones in an interior might really read just as a mid-tone of the same color family on an exterior. It's also going to play a lot with the colors of the hardscape. So you're always going to want to take into consideration first and foremost the roof because these are things that are, that are not transmutable. You're going to be working with the roof, any exposed brick or stonework, fencing, walkways, and then of course things like the actual color of the landscaping. Is it a lush green? Is it something out here in Southern California with a lot more blue grays and blue agave kind of colors and sages that um, call for a different mix? Um, as far as exteriors go, the other really nice thing is a front door. You can play a little bit with window trim. You can play a, bit, a little bit with this color on the stucco, but a front door is really like what I like to consider a piece of jewelry for the home. So even if you have a fairly conservative home and consider it like the little black dress that you always use, you have the same black pump you use with that, but add a wonderful colorful scarf or really unique bangle and you've changed that up. And just like adding an accessory to something classic, changing the color of the door, can actually be a really great way to um, take care of all those things and 
add a little punch. It's a temporary thing. Most front doors can be painted with just a quart of paint. If it's like a weekend job, even if the client wants to do them themselves. And it's just a really great way for them to all be introduced to color. Another factor is often when you're working into more contemporary homes, their neighborhoods are built at the same time and the houses tend to be very, very similar and you often have uh, pretty strict HOA restrictions on exactly how far you can bury in the color of the home. Uh, the front door is a great place for someone to make an individual statement that can really make an impact. Um, I wanted to close here. I did want to say thank you and, and take some questions, but I, I did want to close here and um, speak to you a little bit about the in-home color consultancy service and how it can uh, be helpful for the interior designer. The interior design community use it as a tool. A lot of people think of it just for the retail client who's making their own color selections, but paint color is often one of the last things that is put together um, when an interior design project is is completed. Um, it can be a stressful time. It can be a time where budgets begin to be challenging and it can be time consuming. Uh, what the in-home color consultancy service can do is go ahead and take all of the worries away, work with the fabrics chosen, the new surfaces, even if they're not installed, all those things can be selected. Um, we also produce a complete paint schedule. So we not only do the colors, but the appropriate finishes and do quantity estimation for the painter. We can then, in fact, work directly with the contractor to get all that done. So it really takes a lot off your plate, especially there at the last minute with what you're doing. So um, I would love to open up uh, the time here for some questions. I'm happy to talk about anything as regards to Ferron Ball, uh, color selection for the home or um, the uh, in-home color consultancy service and exactly how that works and how it can be used and utilized by a designer. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, Eric. Um, so yeah, so as he said, it is it is now open to questions. Um, and we have had several coming in um, throughout the presentation, so I'll just go ahead and get started. Um, so Eric, the first question that we have is, um, will um, you be able to provide a transcript of what um, these colors mix well with um, for the presentation. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of easy tones. A lot of our, um, uh, the publications that we put out on our inspiration website, actually we break down those six groups of neutrals and you can get suggestions based off of those. Um, that can be done um, in the showroom or over the phone with any of our associates. Um, that's also something that can be covered in in-home color consultancy service and that again is just as available to an interior designer as it is to a homeowner or a painting contractor. Okay, great. Um, the next question is, do you change the finish um, from woodwork to walls? That's a, actually an excellent question. Uh, we have five interior finishes, so we have two Flats for walls, they're both called emulsion or state emulsion, which is our signature chalky matte finish. And the modern emulsion, which is a slight bit of sheen, is that contains acrylic resin, so it's actually a washable scrubbable flat. So that we developed in answer to our, our clients' needs for a more durable, easy care finish for kids' rooms, kitchens, laundries. So yes, you would definitely use a flat for walls on a flat wall surface. And when you get to trim, um, you would want to base your selection of the finish based on uh, what the space is used for, how much wear it's going to get, and how much sheen um, you want to have as in, in contrast to the sheen that's on the wall. So our estate eggshell, which is our classic, is a really soft 20% sheen. So it's a really great pairing with the estate emulsion because they're both really soft and non-reflective. Our modern emulsion is a 40% sheen, closer to an American semi-gloss. It's also a polyurethane formulation, so it's nice and hard. So it's a great finish. And then we have a really glorious full gloss finish, which is uh, a 95% sheen, which is the highest sheen level you can achieve in a water-based formula. So we're very proud of that finish. It can be used on trim and walls, and it actually even can go 
right outside the house and be used on exteriors because it's such adorable finish. So yes, you do change the, the sheen. There is also a specialty finish called dead flat, which can be used on plaster, woodwork, and metal. If you need to, for instance, uh, paint a radiator and want it to disappear, you have a state of motion on the walls and you want the radiator to not have any sheen, you can use that. So that's a specialty finish. Um, it's a little bit trickier to use, but it can be used. So it's easier to make like a really soft transition between sheen or give a little uh, contrast with it. And you will also notice definitely more depth of color. As you increase the sheen, you increase the depth of color and the same color will change a lot as you change the sheen. Thank you. Um, we are getting several questions about um, how someone can go about ordering a large uh, Faro and Ball color book of the samples. Um, there's, you can certainly order them via the website. The best thing to, for you to do if you are a designer is to contact one of our showrooms, which can be done in person over email or via the phone. Um, and if we set up an account for you as um, an interior designer, there's special pricing um, not only on the materials, but also especially on the any of the color aids, so, which includes the large color book. So that would be the easiest way to do it. If you, um, once you're set up with a business, you can actually, um, if you haven't been set up with a design account with us, you can, you can call us and get signed up and we can send you a complimentary medium color book, which is the Fandex size, and then also offer, like I said, the special pricing on the large color book. Great, thank you. Um, the next question is, does Faro and Ball do custom color wallpapers? And if so, is there a minimum? Uh, yes, we do. Our wallpaper, which um, wasn't mentioned during the presentation, but I'm glad this came up. Our wallpaper is made with our paint. So we use no ink with our wallpaper. So the ground color is put on with our paint and then designs are put on with our with our paint um, using either a trough method, a roller method, or a block print method, which will give you a lot of texture. Um, we try to have a variety of colorways that do work, but they can be custom made. Um, there are a few parameters. There's a minimum of 20 rolls. So um, for a small project, it's not necessarily that feasible, but for larger projects like doing large hallways that go up two stairways, et cetera, it's a pretty easy thing to do. Um, we also offer um, what's called a strike off. So for a fee, you can actually have us do a quick run of it and get a nice, uh, I think it's approximately a six foot run of the color combination actually made and sent to you for approval before you proceed with the order. But we do have designers that utilize that all the time. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, we, I'm also seeing a couple questions on here um, regarding um, what trends you're noticing and um, you know, kind of what you feel the color trends are going to be in paint moving forward. Okay. Um, as far as neutrals, the, the soft warmer grays that sort of came in a few years ago are still very popular and I think they're going to be around. Um, what's changing with that is they're not necessarily being used so much in a monochromatic sense is uh, people are discovering that they're, they're a great mix with stronger colors and a great way to kind of tone down um, a room, especially if the light's a little harsh. Um, greens are really big. Greens are um, coming back whether they're blue-based and tend toward a gray read in full sun or rich or yellow-based and bright. Those are definitely in um, a lot of our colors that have been popular are becoming more and more popular for different uses. A lot of the really dark colors are being used on cabinetry, especially in the higher gloss finishes, especially in kitchens. Um, another thing that we're seeing is color on the ceiling, where the room itself might be neutral and color is used on the ceiling. Um, the uh, designer trend that started a few years ago that's kind of starting to trickle down, which is like I spoke of earlier, the full gloss ceiling, that's coming into play a little bit more. Um, so yeah, there's definitely some, some trends that happen. They tend to happen a little more slowly, but if you look at our color palette, how it evolves over the years, it definitely is a reflection of that. If you look at a color palette from 10 years ago, there's barely any whites and there's a lot of yellows and a lot of reds. And now if you look at our color palette, the whites and neutrals take up a good third of it. So that really speaks to um, what the client is asking for and what people are using and, and what's going forward. But um, 
I would say the one thing that's maybe more of a trend that's a little harder to nail down is people are getting a little bit braver about mixing color. So it's kind of exciting for us sometimes when people will come in with an interesting mid-tone color on the wall and then to go for something completely contrasting and really stark for a large built-in in the same room could just be some really, really exciting combinations. Thanks, Eric. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and wrap up with one last question, um, and that is how do these um, Farrow and Ball color consultants work with the designers? Okay, that's a great question. Um, when we work with a client, we work with them just one-on-one -on -one and talk about their, pro their, their the project that they're working with. We would take the same approach with a designer um, and obviously the designer takes the lead. So we are the technical expert for this whole experience. We're the color expert, but we are not the interior designer. So obviously we, we would uh, defer to any decisions made by the designer. Um, we can work with them in conjunction with their client or we can just work with them actually in the home with some of the materials chosen, et cetera, just to confirm some choices and to hopefully improve um, the overall look of the room to basically look at what you've chosen for your upholstery fabrics and shapes, the flooring, the accessories, the kind of feel you get for the room, and hopefully pick a color for the walls, the trim, the ceiling, that really showcases that. So it's not about necessarily knocking someone over with color when they come into the room, but helping enhance the selections that you as a designer have made so painstakingly. Thank you, Eric. Um, and so um, lastly, I do want to say, um, we, I did see a couple questions regarding how you can get access again to this presentation and the audio. Um, we will be emailing this out to all of um, the attendees and registrants, um, as well as posting this presentation to the ASID YouTube uh, channel. Um, so thank you again um, to Eric and to Farrow and Ball, our ASID national industry partner. Um, as well as all of you for participating in this week's Partner Spotlight webinar. We will look forward to seeing you all again. Um, our next webinar series will be on Wednesday, March 14th, where Smith and Noble will take the spotlight. Thanks, everyone.